video, I'm going to talk to you about scale degree names. Now, we've already identified that each member of a scale can be referred to as a scale degree. And we've been using numerical terms to refer to them. We've said that we have the second scale degree or the fifth scale degree or a half step between the seventh and eighth scale degrees. And that's how we've referred to them numerically ascending through the scale. And that's a perfectly good way to refer to the scale degrees. And in fact, we will continue to use that. But there are some other terms that are also used, some specific names that the scale degrees have that you should be aware of because, again, they're terms that you will come across that people who are educated in music will use because they're a way of communicating musical ideas, musical concepts, and you need to be aware of them. You need to know what they mean so that you can fall into that usage of uh, musical language as easily as you can referring to them by their number in the scale. So what are those terms? Well, it's very simple. I'm going to go through and give you the terms, and then I'm going to explain to you where they come from because they're, they are often a little bit misleading. Um, at least when you initially look at them. But let's start with just what are the names? And these are just labels. This is like me telling you that uh, uh, you know um, a, a car is called a car. You know, why is it called a car? Well, it's the name we have for a car. You know, a chair is called a chair. Why is it called a chair? It's the name we have for a chair. Uh, there are reasons why these names are the way they are. That if you go back into history, there's probably a, a good reason why the word car evolved to be the name that we use for a car. A chair, the, the name we use for a chair, I, I'm sure there are good reasons for that, and there are certainly good reasons for the names that we use when it comes to scale degrees, but they are just labels at the end of the day. So this is just me telling you what the names are. So the first scale degree, I'll try and fit this all into one line here. The first scale degree, we'll use a C major scale, is tonic. The second scale degree, super tonic. The third scale degree, medium. The fourth scale degree, the sub-dominant. The fifth scale degree, the dominant. The sixth scale degree, the sub-medium. seventh scale degree is called the leading tone. It's called the leading tone, or in the case of the natural minor, it is called it's called the subtonic. These are just labels, right? So don't get confused by this. They may seem a little bit confusing to start with, but we've got tonic, supertonic, medium, submedium, dominant, sub. Uh, sorry, I said submedium here, didn't I? Let me just do that again. Tonic, supertonic, medium, subdominant, dominant, submedium, leading tone, and in natural minor, that leading tone is called the subtonic, right? They're just labels. You could say to me, uh, you know, why is it called the subdominant? Well, I'm going to try and explain that to you in a moment. But for now, and if you don't even want to know why it's called it, you're just happy to accept that the fourth scale degree is called the subdominant, that is fine. Just accept that and learn that. And you can stop the video here as long as you learn that the fourth scale degree is the subdominant, the third scale degree is the medium, the second scale degree is the supertonic, and so on. You just learn that. For those of you who are a little bit curious about why these names, they, they sort of make sense, but they don't quite, well then stay tuned, watch the rest of the video, because I'm going to explain where this comes from. Right? So here's the deal. When you look at these names, initially you would say to yourself, okay, well, a tonic, okay, we've got to have a name to start somewhere, so we'll call it tonic, that's fine. And then this is higher than the tonic, so it's the supertonic. Well, that, that makes sense, I can see that. And this is the medium, I, I suppose it's kind of in the middle, so it's kind of medium, it's mid midway. Then the subdominant, well, that, that kind of makes sense, it's right before the dominant. You know, then we have the dominant, you know, okay. I can see that, you know, the dominant is important in relation to the tonic, etc., etc. Uh, then we have the submedium. Well, that, that doesn't really make any sense. Why would the submedium come in? That's not, you would think that would be the one below the medium, what, but that's the super tonic. You see how confusing, and then you've got leading tone and it's got two different names. It gets confusing. They don't seem to make logical sense when you look at them. That's because they were never thought of as a scale that ascended 
chronologically, for want of a better word, or ascended up through the various lines and spaces. They were never conceived that way. The names come from instead seeing the tonic as a center, and then the other names, supertonic and subtonic, and uh, mediant and submediant, and dominant and subdominant, as above and below the tonic. So, it makes much more sense if you write it instead this way. We put the tonic in the middle, C. Then we have, and it's clear as a tonic. Right? And it kind of resides right in the middle. Then we have the super tonic, which is a whole step above. Then we have the subtonic, which is a whole step below. Remember, it comes from the natural minor. Then we have the median, a third above. We have the submedian, again, it comes from the natural minor. Median and the submedian. Then we have the going up, we go fifth above. We have the dominant, we go a fifth below, we have the subdominant. Dominant and the subdominant. So the names make much more sense when you don't think of them as. Um, being in order, tonic, supertonic, median, and so on, but instead think of them as above and below a central tonic. Tonic in the middle, go up a second, you get to the supertonic, go down a second, you get to the subtonic. Up to a median, third above, submedian, third below. Up to a dominant, fifth above, subdominant, fifth below. That makes sense? So it's all about centering around a tonic and seeing things as above the tonic or below the tonic in a particular interval distance, rather than thinking of it as a scale written out in a scale-like form. This, these names and this concept comes from the medieval period into the Renaissance. It's, it's a, an ancient way of looking at music that then later gets turned into a more scale-like form that we're used to, but the names are retained. So for those of you who are curious, uh, that's where the names come from. It's also why the names are the way they are. It makes much more sense this way than when it's listed out in a scale. For those of you who don't really care about that, the bottom line is you've got to know that the dominant is the fifth scale degree and that the median is the, six, is the third scale degree and the submedian is the sixth scale degree. And you've just got to know that stuff so that when we get to talking about those notes in the context of our wider use of music theory, you understand what we're talking about, what we're referring to, and eventually what's going to happen is we're going to build chords on those notes. We're going to talk about the dominant chord and the subdominant chord, and you need to know what that means. So it means the chord built on the fifth, the chord built on the fourth, and you need to know that so that you can refer to them and communicate with other musicians clearly about your intentions. So, for what it's worth, those are the names of the scale degree.